this time on Expedition Drenched. They're here. They're here. I literally just saw the, the fin come up just now. We did it. They're here. They're here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hi, girl. Like yesterday was my, my top three, three moments and I'm so happy that you will be able to see it soon. Like a meter from the boat, just like <laughs> just like made this big splat. Oh! What's that? This is the story of a sailboat named Sylvia and the ragtag crew that call her home. Join us each week as we explore the planet both above and below the surface. And see what it's really like to live a life at sea. This is Expedition Drenched. just arrived to a secret location, uh, mooring ball in the middle of nowhere that minky whales come. And uh, we're hoping they like the sound of engines and like compressors and stuff. Uh, apparently the vibration attracts them. So we left our tanks to pump here. We're gonna pump them through the night. We're hoping that when we wake up, there's a bunch of minkies waiting to play with us. Excited, because today well, I'm hoping that we see some minke whales, um, some dwarf mink whales. Um, there's only like a six week period of time here in Australia where these little small whales called dwarf mink whales show up and um, nobody really knows why actually. The animals just live in solitude their whole lives, but once a year for six weeks they gather here. You would think to breed or something, but nobody actually knows why. So. Um, they like the sound of engines, so I've just turned on the engine, let them know that we're here. Hopefully that purring sound gets them excited and they come close. And um, I'm the only one up. And so it's hard to have the whole boat to yourself with a, a crew of 12. So it's kind of nice. We found Matt, or what have we not found? We have this book of whales, and uh, we're looking through here for dwarf Mickey whales. It's not in the book. It's not even in the book. Not even in the book. I believe that undiscovered species of whale. <laughs> it's not even in the book. That's yeah. pretty cool. But what, yeah. what is in the book? What is in the book okay. is so we have the pike whale, which apparently is the same as a Mickey whale. Uh -huh. Pretty common all around, but I bet this is just like several subspecies. There you go. But we'll get back to you. <laughs> tell me, tell me everything you know about the mink whale, the dwarf mink I whale. I know that uh, they appear every time uh, someone is scuba diving around. Ah, so it's not allowed to do that, but they just they are um, attracted, or maybe they're curious yeah. about it. This is whale music. This is how I'm calling in. This is how you call them in. They're really more classical whales. We tried dubstep, and it didn't work. Put this. Put this. This. this is where it is. A little Beethoven. Yeah. They're here. They're here. I literally just saw the, the fin come up just now. We did it. They're here. They're here. I just heard the breath. Right here. Pretty much the whales want us to come play, so we're gonna go play now. <laughs> Whoa! Come on here. Look at that! Yeah. Here we go! This is our stern line, and everybody's supposed to hang on to the line and just have a hand on it and 
just sit there and float at the surface and the whales will come super close to us. I have to say that I've never seen like a more sentient being than the whale than this uh, dwarf mink whale. Like sharks will come check you out, but I've never had something that like leaves and keeps coming back to you and keeps coming back to you. They're as excited to see us as we are to see them. They are waiting for you, Nerea. Take the GoPro. Take the GoPro for each. That was the best day, the morning swim with whales. Dwarf minke whales are commonly referred to as the world's friendliest whale. The Ribbon Reef in the Great Barrier Reef is the only known aggregation site for these whales and currently the only place in the world where humans can interact with them while they're here for six to eight weeks each year. It's important when interacting that we remain respectful to the whale by never swimming at them or touching them, rather allowing them to approach you by their own will, maintaining both the health of the whale and most importantly, a positive, trusting relationship between us and them. The difference between a minke whale and a dwarf minke whale comes down to size. Minke whales can grow to around 12 to 14 meters, whereas a dwarf minke whale will only grow to about 8 meters. This species was only identified in 1981 after approaching scuba divers on the reef. It's still unknown why they travel to the ribbon reefs, but the current theory is that they travel up from the subantarctic, giving birth along the way and mating, and finally arriving here to socialize and meet each other from their otherwise solitary lives. The majority of the whales that interact with humans tend to be the adolescents, who are not old enough to mate or give birth. Whether or not we're there, they would still be here to socialize. But it seems that since their schedule isn't too busy at the moment, amid hanging out with each other, they also enjoy playing with us too. Often the same whales are seen year after year, growing up, raising their young, showing them the reef, and continuing that pattern through their lineage. So much is still to be discovered and learnt about these magnificent mammals, but maybe we should learn something from them too about the importance of having fun and remembering that life doesn't have to be all about work, achievements, or the stressful things. It's also about playing, having fun, and making time to do the things that make you happy with those who make you happy. None of us have ever had an experience quite like this one, where we feel like the animal isn't just curious and driving by to check us out, but actually excited to see us, seeking our contact, and splashing around the boat to wake us up in the morning. The memories we'll take away from this life-changing experience is something we'll cherish for the rest of our lives and look back on as one of the most magical encounters we ever had. I think after this swim, like nothing gets better than this. Like, I'm stoked. Ah! You guys want to tell me what, what maintenance team has to do today? Fix a compressor. Mm. Yeah. So our compressor is on the fritz, as compressors do. They're notorious for always having issues, and ours has taken about an hour to pump a tank. Normally it takes about 25 minutes. So we're wondering if there's a leak or what's going on. We're not really quite sure. So me and I told are tearing her apart and just seeing everything that we can. And in the meantime, I thought I would clean her up. So I cleaned all the parts. I sprayed it with zinc, because like everything 
metal on a boat, it eventually gets a little bit of corrosion and rust. This is our lifeline, keeps us alive, plus it keeps us having fun. To me, it's the most important piece of equipment we have on the boat, so we baby it as best we can. At this point, we've changed out the electronics on it. Uh, I feel like Itor and I have become pretty good compressor mechanics, if you will. <laughs> Just part of it, you know, when you're out diving off the map, you kind of have to be self-sufficient, and the compressor maintenance man, he doesn't do service calls out here, so it's up to us. We changed the filter, and it started um, to work uh, slower, so we are checking the filter again, what's going on, and uh, we're gonna run again, and we're gonna check if we can find any leaks, air leaks or something, because uh, it's uh, the power, the house, the, it's filling up, the tank is a little bit weaker. We found the crack that was in here, and we epoxied it, and now we're putting this on, and we're also using a zip tie to like, to like keep this together. So we got this metal zip tie, we're gonna try to keep this together because what's happening is this hose is able to move out because there's a crack in it. And so we can't fix it because we don't have the right parts and we're out in the middle of nowhere. So we have to MacGyver it. Well, do you see that? <laughs> we kind of focus like that. You know, yeah. all the time. Yeah, totally interrupted us. It's crazy. We're trying to work on the compressor. <laughs> this royal just is out here. Yeah. Popping a beetle whaley. <laughs> This is the new and improved though. How is it doing? Painted it black. Perfect. The zip tie is pulling it together as well as the glue. We've cleaned it all up, cleaned our case up. Now this is going on. And then we're gonna have, now we're gonna have a new one. It looks like a new compressor. Yeah, better, improved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pumps way faster. Yeah. yeah. The moment we turn the compressor on, they came. So they like that sound. All right, Ronya. We just walked out our back door, and uh, what are we gonna get to go do here? Well, everybody told us the way up back, so we're gonna go and see some whales. Uh -huh. <laughs> just when I didn't think it could get any better. A big pot of bottlenose dolphins comes cruising through. Scared away our whale, but it's cool. <laughs> that I woke up this morning and I was so excited and so over I don't know I, I couldn't believe the day that we had all the like we saw more or less like 10 15 minky whales and they wanted to play with us like we were so small big everything and I think my highlight apart from the milky ways was um, swimming with the bottlenose dolphins it's it was my first time in my life and since I came uh, to be a part of a crew of Sylvia, I've been waiting for this. So I've been almost waiting for that for a year to happen. I couldn't believe it. I didn't have a camera, I didn't have anything. I just enjoy, enjoy to swim with them, like go and dive, like doing like periods under the water and like turning and the feeling of like 
the dolphins watching me while they were saying hello too and like showing me their their fins and the belly and the, the baby one swimming around like I think that was one of my the most magical experience that I, I had on Sylvia and we had a lot I mean like the hampa whales like the hammerheads everything like all the big sea pygmy horse we've seen so many things under the water that I just can't can't believe that we did all of this in a year but yeah, it was my, my top three, three moments and I'm so happy that you will be able to see it too. What do you think about the day? Well, I woke up, went straight out to dive with the whales and we are having amazing dinner, so yeah, good day. Next time on Expedition Drenched, we celebrate a very special birthday and we hang out with everybody's favorite fish friends at the infamous Lighthouse Bonnie. And we are like, should we jump? Should we see? Should we go to the bow? And we are running around, like, <laughs> trying to take the best, trying to take the best shot.